Hey guys, welcome to the Heart of David. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, short video today. Um, there's a, just one main subject and just something else I wanted to, to build upon that I was already talking about. So those two subjects. The first is, the main subject here is peddling the gospel. And uh, the other one is just... Um, is about Revelation 6 and how it pairs up with uh, uh, Joel 3. So, and that's significant. Um, so let's take a look at this. I may have, um, I've spoken about this before, about... Um, you guys know full well that that right now, and it's been like this for a while, as long as there's been YouTube, that it seems like everybody who is doing a, a Christian video, it seems most, everyone's trying to, and I don't blame people for wanting to have good thumbnails and stuff like that, right? You want people to see your videos, and, um, you know, a lot of people get AI to do it. I would never... Well, maybe AI for that, if it was an AI generated on the side, you don't have to sign up for anything. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that because you just hit the button and it does it for you. But um, getting into AI, talking AI, that's what I, well, that's what I mean. Because there's AI generation. Anyways, those are kind of separate things. But everyone is in competition, and you know, you see people. And I, like I'm saying, I don't blame them for wanting to make a good thumbnail. But when it comes to like, you know the thumbnails I'm speaking about, right? You know the, the, the way that w what people do to attract certain things. And, uh, you know, like they put their face in there like this. And they're like, you know, they're pointing. They're like, um, I think you guys know exactly what I mean. And uh, it all does... It all does tie into what I'm saying here. So I'm going to read you a scripture. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I may have seen it in the incorrect light. Um, I looked at it as in, well, it sounded pretty straightforward. People peddle the gospel, right? Um, they could be doing it for money. They could be doing it for other reasons. So I guess that is kind of correct. But let me straighten it out. So this is 2 Corinthians 2. I'm going to start at verse 14. Now thanks be to God always, uh, who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of knowledge in every place. Uh, for we are to God the fragrance of, of Jesus Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the, um, I looked at that. Among those who are perishing? That sounds strange. But uh, to the one, yes, to the one we are the aroma of death leading to life. Sorry, that's what it was. And to the other, the aroma leading to life, those who love Jesus Christ. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, so many, peddling the word of God, uh, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of uh God in Christ. So what does this mean? You know, a lot of people would think it had to do with money, and I'm sure it could do with money. It could be doing with, oh, I know this, you know, like um, people who use it for certain reasons to say, I have more knowledge than you. Um, people use things over you, but let's take a look. You see how easy it is to sway the masses how easy it is, you know, just to go and say, God spoke to me, and um, I'm going to slay you in the spirit, uh, give me donations, lie, and, but it doesn't have to be that. Just give me a second here. <clears throat> it's 
So I'll put this in the description box. This is a plain Bible teaching, peddling the Word of God. When one has a product to sell, he will highlight it. Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it, right? You'll get it when you hear this. Um, when someone has a product to sell, he will highlight its impressive features and keep silent any real or perceived problems that it may have. It's common for one to exaggerate or even lie in order to sell this product. Is this not what's happening right now? And that's what we call the falling away. Part of it anyways. As they're doing things that, that do not please God in the most horrendous ways. It's common for one to exaggerate and even lie in order to sell his product. If sales are not as good as he hopes, he may even decide to change the product altogether to make it more appealing to his target audience. When one is selling a regular product or service, there's nothing wrong with making changes in order to improve sales, as long as he continues to provide things um, honest in the sight of all uh, men. And that last part was Romans 12:17. However, too many people view the gospel as a product to be sold and will therefore change it in order to make it appealing to a larger group of people. So, I would call that part of the falling away because they have nothing to do with Christ um, in the way that they're trying to sell Christ. They're trying to sell themselves too. Their books, their merchandise, their, their view on God right their view on God they change that that's a Catholic Church that's many churches that's these elevation churches who have whatever attraction you know those are the people where um, on the you know on the day of Christ that they're gonna say didn't we preach in your name didn't we Lord, Lord, right? However, too many people view the gospel as a product to be sold and will therefore change it in order to make it appealing. God never changes to a larger group of people. Yet the gospel is a power for salvation, Romans 1.16. Not a common product to be marketed and sold. Therefore, we must not treat it as a co common or changeable. Notice what Paul told the brethren in Corinth. People are more attracted to click on things, and that's why you look, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of looking at other videos and being like, how does this person get like 19,000 views in an hour? Like the things that he's teaching don't even lead to Christ. And as someone commented a long time ago, they said, the people with the lesser views you know, if you have if you have a ton of views, you're probably not doing the right thing. But um, notice what Paul told the brethren in Corinth: "For we are not like many peddling the word of God, but as from sincerity, but as from God we speak in Christ in the sight of God." Listen, let's let's be pure about this. Let's be honest. God never changes His laws, His laws, the commandments, everything about him I didn't mean to say laws but um, yeah you get it right we don't change that I can understand if a church doesn't have people coming to it that they do certain things to attract people you know like more coffee or or things like that you know like little things around the edges but never change the Word of God instead of corrupting the gospel through marketing tricks notice what Paul did he spoke from sincerity, and many people appreciate that. Because his purpose was uh, not to make money, and I went over this yesterday, or gain the largest following for himself that he could. That's why that's why God says, you know, I've saved for myself 7,000 people who will not bow the knee to Baal. Uh, his purpose was simply to save people through the gospel, and that's the simplicity of it.
don't veer away from that. Stop looking at things just because they have a bow on it. And believe me, I understand as much as anybody that, you know, I use YouTube a lot. I use it to learn. I use it to watch Christian videos. I use it to make my videos. When I, you know, when I'm leaving, I turn on a video. When I come back, when I'm doing my dishes, putting stuff away, I'm listening to that. And when you look and you see you see all the clickbait and you see other stuff too not to do with God and it's, it's really hard not to want to click on it to see what's going on I understand stick with purity you know I'm uh, there are Christian videos that I, I still the clickbait there are good Christian videos that have a lot of clickbait I don't understand why they do it you know like I don't understand why they do it. A nice, there's nothing wrong with a nice uh, thumbnail, but when it's like 666 is coming and, um, you know, it's like, you know, sh pictures of demons, like, whatever. <laughs> um, it's too dramatic. I don't, like, I don't understand. Instead of corrupting the gospel through marketing tricks, notice what Paul did. So he spoke with sincerity because his purpose was not to make money or okay so he just wanted to save people he understood like Paul also understood in a way that he was persecuting people killing people and then all of a sudden he sees Jesus Christ of course that's what he you know like he spoke from God by accurately representing the scriptures 1 Peter 4:11. he didn't add to it take from it or change the gospel he spoke, and if he saw something, remember what he confronted Peter to his face, if he sees something unfair like that, he wasn't afraid to say something. Remember it was Peter, you know, would only eat with the, with the, you know, he'd be with the Gentiles, but then if the Jews came, that he would only stay with the Jews. He spoke in Christ, trying to lead men to him. He spoke in the sight of God, knowing that he would um, have to give an account to him for his work. You know, these people who are doing all these... I'll finish this. We need to preach Paul as Paul preached. Not with games. He says, imitate me, right? In Christ. Gimmick or different gospels, but with sincerity and truth. That's it for that. See you later. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> You have no idea, like, if, if you're one of those people who is doing all these gimmicks, if, I doubt you're watching my video, but, um, I'm not saying people who have thumbnails and all that aren't going to be saved. That's not what I'm saying. The people who aren't going to be saved are the people who change the gospel, who, um, you, you understand exactly what I mean, right? And these people do it, and they, they think they may have 50 more years of their life, but they may die tomorrow. Right? They may die tomorrow, and uh, they'll be separated from God. Separated from God. So, remember, hell isn't made by Satan. Hell is made by God. He made it for the angels who came out of their abode, right? And for Satan... So I'm going to get to something else here. I don't know if I'm going to read all the scriptures, but um, I'm going to read a comment I got today. Um, and uh, I'm putting out... Remember I made a video? <clears throat> I can't control my voice sometimes. It goes higher and then it goes lower. Um, I can't control that. Look back at my videos. 
I had spent a lot of time trying to figure out when does when are we going to be saved exactly according to the scriptures like at what point are we going to be saved and we know one thing right we know that we are not if we're not destined to wrath I can find about four scriptures that say we are not destined to wrath both in the writings of Paul and writings of John and Revelation right Revelation 310 right So if we're not destined to wrath, that when that wrath comes, we're going to be protected from it, right? So does that mean that's when the rapture happens? I just call it the rapture because that's, it's caught up to meet the Lord in the air. And uh, I think it's really exciting because finally I found where tribulation ends and where wrath begins. It's in the sixth seal. I'm going to read this. Um, so look back in my video. I'll link it. I'll link what I just read to you. And um, I'll also link when does the tribulation end. How did I not see this before? I don't know if it's when, for sure when we're taken up in the clouds. But my guess would be probably yes. When else would that be? So listen. Um, thanks for the video. I've been studying eschatology lately and had my eyes opened. When you overlay, so this is what I did in the video, when you overlay Matthew and Revelation, which I had never done before, it becomes obvious that we will be here for the tribulation. We're in it now. Anyone who doesn't think so, that's, you know, that's on you. Most people um, confuse tribulation and wrath. They are not the same. Christ uh, says himself, after the tribulation of those times... The elect will be taken so we know when the tribulation ends it's a sixth seal because it says so I'm gonna read it to you again no one will know the day and the hour but and remember he'll come like a thief in the night right um, but we will know the times and seasons we're in that you know they're trying to destroy the world right in front of us and there's wars and there's crazy weather events and earthquakes and we need to be watching can't wait to to learn more, I was encouraged to read my Bible more faithfully after watching your video. When I saw these, well, it was a bunch of pairings of scripture, and I put them in order. And by the way, I did another video. It's not edited yet. It will probably be out tomorrow because I have to edit another one even before that. But let's go back and take a look. Uh, the pre-tribulation believers think we're not going to be here during the tribulation we're in tribulation it probably began in 2020 that was government control of the whole world everything that happened since if you don't think what the heck would you call it <laughs> and that would be in the bible everything that's happened since we've had prophetic signs every day every single day i can go to my news clicker right now and find more biblical signs just in one news feed of like 50 stories than 50 years it's up to you if you want to believe it or not so let's go to revelation 6 and go to the sixth seal and i'm not going to go through the whole all the different verses because it takes quite a while Revelation 6. So my question was to myself, when does the tribulation end? To find that answer, we have to find when wrath begins, right? It only makes sense. Cosmic disturbances. I looked. It says cosmic disturbances, but that's not what the scripture, this is added to it. That's just the title. All the titles in the scriptures are not from scripture, by the way. So it's up for interpretation, but it sounds like it could be. Um, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, 
and the sun became black as sackcloth, sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Sounds like a nuclear bomb or something from space. As a fig tree drops uh, its late figs when it's shaken by a mighty wind. Uh, then the sky receded as a scroll when it's rolled up in every mountain and island is moved out of its place. That sounds like a nuclear bomb. You go look up a nuclear bomb explosion on YouTube right now and you'll see when it goes off, the sky immediately starts folding up like a scroll. It could be an explosion of any kind, but it has to be pretty huge. Um, every island, mountain and island was moved out of its place. That may not be totally literal, right? And the kings of the earth, the great men, rich men, commanders, mighty men, every slave free, hid themselves in the caves of the rocks and the mountains, all these bunkers that they're building, and said to the mountains and rocks, follow us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And here's the answer. Hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne. And from what? The first time we hear this in Revelation. It's Revelation 6, the sixth seal. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. So here it is. But it doesn't say it once, it says it twice. The next verse, 17. For the great day of his wrath has come. If anyone tries to argue that, they know nothing about Scripture. It's right here in front of our face. And who is able to stand? Right? And then... Like, you, you ask, are we going to be taken then? And it says, and then it goes to the sealed of Israel, 144,000. Uh, don't, you know, seal them. You know, are those Jews or are those believers? Are those both? And the question is, why wouldn't it be us? We have faith in Christ. Of course, we're going to be saved. Right after the sealed, before it gets to the seventh seal, it says, look, listen to this. So we know we're not destined to wrath. So he saves us when wrath comes. After these things I looked at, behold, a great multitude, which nobody could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues. Sounds like people from the earth. Standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne unto the Lamb. And the angels stood around the throne. The uh, living creatures fell on their faces before the throne, worshiped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, glory. I'm just going to skip on. And it says, Then one of the elders said, uh, answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know, of course, why were you asking, you know, John saying, why are you asking me? I don't know, you know. So he said, these are the ones who have come out of the what? The great tribulation. The what we're feeling right now, which is going to get a lot hotter. And wash your robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him night and day in his temple. And then it goes on to say he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. You know, all, everything will be saved. So we have to make it to the sixth seal. Famine, right? That is, I think, the fifth. War, you know, the red horse, which I believe quite possibly has happened. People say that that's going to be two, two billion people dying because it says power to kill over one quarter of the planet. But... It doesn't say, it just says power to. So that, that likely means there's just going to be a lot of killing and a lot of war. There's going to be a lot of people all alive. People think it's two billion killed, but that's not what it says. Let's move on to something else. So I read the sixth seal. When there'll be a great earthquake and the stars, the moon, and the sun will be darkened, right? Let's go to Matthew 24. I'm excited about this because I had never paired them up this way. You can read these over and over, but never know. 
And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. For the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. They'll be shortened at the time of wrath. When wrath comes, that's when the shortening ends for us. Then it says, just give me a rest in my voice. This is Matthew 24, 29. Very important. And then I'm going to go to Joel 3. So go to Joel 3, or sorry, not Joel 3, go go to the sixth seal, read the sixth seal over, and then read this over. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. It's the same thing. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the heaven. Wow, that's telling us that in the sixth seal, because this is the same event, He's coming then. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. When the sixth seal goes, that's what it's saying. What it's immediately after the tribulation of those days. So I've already separated tribulation from wrath. It's in the sixth seal. Read it over. This is why I'm so excited about this. After the tribulation of those days, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven. That's what it says in Revelation 6. And the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. It's telling us that it's going to happen then. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with the grand sound of a trumpet. There it is. But Paul says, he will come with the sound of the trumpet. The trumpet of God. That's it. Wow. They will gather his elect from the four winds from one of end of heaven to the other. That's when we're taken. Like, wow, man. And then there's a parable, right? We know the seasons. When we start to see all these things happening, it's right at the doors. Jesus is at the doors, man. We don't go through all that because we'd be killed if we were here for the trumpets and the vials. Most likely. We're not destined to wrath. Let's go to Joel 3 here. Day of the Lord. Or wait, is that... Did I get that wrong? Maybe I mean Joel 2. Let's see here. I probably should have read this before I did this, but so the day of the Lord, it's just the beginning. And it, it, they gave the title of the day of the Lord, okay? Again, remember, they make the titles. This isn't what it actually says in the, in the thing. But it is. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day. Okay, yeah, that's why they gave it. For the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand, a day of darkness. There it is. Darkness, like it says. In Revelation 6 and Matthew 24, 29. And there's one in Isaiah 2. I haven't looked for that one. A day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. But then it goes on to say, A people come great and strong, the like who have never been seen and will never be there. We won't be there for that part. I've read Joel uh, 2. I've read Joel, all Joel to you. So there it is. 
I would uh, look, I don't know, to, to put it in any particular order. I made a video, another one, and I explained it again because I did a video, you know, that person responded there. And I did it again, but I still kind of didn't put it in order. I'm going to put it in perfect order in another video. I'm going to explain it to you. Guys, all you have to figure out is the separation of tribulation from wrath. And you know that's where you have to make it to. We aren't destined to wrath. We'll be supernaturally saved. And what Paul says is to meet the Lord in the air. And people's argument will be this. Well, it says we're going to be saved at the last day. And people think that's, believers think that's going to be the actual last day. But the last day is different for non-believers versus believers. Do you get it? For believers, our last day will come then. At the sixth seal, as it's showing that. And the dead in Christ will be raised and all that. That's what they don't understand. They think we have to go through the trumpets and all that kind of stuff. No, we don't. We're not destined to wrath. It's, it's, it makes me excited. but And that's why I say I'm waiting for a giant earthquake to happen. Because that's Revelation 6. I'm waiting for war to spread even more. To see all these evil people do whatever it is they're doing. to With all these agendas. See how far it goes. And guys, we have to make it through there. God bless.